another major Supreme Court ruling today. The justices ruled in favor of a high school football coach, a Christian, who was put on leave for praying on the field after games. Joseph Kennedy lost his job as a public school football coach in Bremerton, Washington, for refusing to stop praying at the 50-yard line after games. In a 6-3 to three ruling, the nation's highest court said the school district, quote, sought to restrict Mr. Kennedy's actions, at least in part, because of their religious character. And joining me now to discuss is John Bursch, senior counsel and vice president of appellate advocacy at the Alliance Defending Freedom. John, thanks so much for coming on. Great to see you. Uh, first off, your thoughts on the Supreme Court's ruling and its significance when it comes to religious freedom. Well, it's really a huge win for religious believers today. Uh, the court essentially held that you don't give up your right to be able to pray and engage in other religious conduct simply because you happen to be uh, an employee of a public institution, such as a public school or another government entity. And so that's a huge win for the free exercise clause and the, the free speech clause for all Americans who work for those kinds of employers. Yeah, and there were three dissenters, as you know. Talk to us about what they argued. Well, they, they argued two things. One, they said that this wouldn't or this would uh, potentially allow students to be coerced by teachers who have religious beliefs. And based on what the majority opinion says, that the justices say flat out, that's not true. There was no evidence of coercion in this case. Uh, the football coach, when he was asked the very first time by students if they could participate in his private prayer at the 50-yard line, uh, he said, well, you can do whatever you want. It's a free country. And there was no evidence in the record that he gave more playing time or captain positions to anyone based on their participation in prayer. So that, that's just not an issue in this case. Uh, the other thing the dissenter said is that this erodes the separation between church and state. And again, that isn't true. Uh, what, what happened here is that the school erected a wall between church and state that the Constitution doesn't allow. Uh, their concern was that having a, a coach make a private prayer after a football game could somehow be construed as the school endorsing his religion. And the U.S. Supreme Court majority said that's not accurate, quite the opposite. The free exercise clause protects his ability to engage in private prayer, just like it would if he was praying silently at a cafeteria table before lunch. And as you know, this is the second major ruling in just the past week, uh, protecting religious freedom, specifically at schools. What do you think this signals? Well, there's really been a, a very long win streak for religious liberty in the U.S. Supreme Court going back several years right now. And I think it, it really comes down to the justices returning to original understanding of the free exercise and establishment clauses in the First Amendment. Uh, for years, the U.S. Supreme Court was allowing the government to restrict religious liberty, uh, sometimes in, in very severe ways. And the, the Supreme Court is now bending back towards the original meaning of the Constitution. And this is really a win for all Americans because uh, we, we should be able to rejoice together when people of faith are allowed to live out that faith in the public square. Uh, religion is good for so many things. It's the reason that we have public universities and libraries and hospitals and homeless shelters and adoption agencies. Uh, lots of good comes when people can exercise their religion freely. And this is certainly a step in the right direction. And John, before I let you go, any final thoughts? Well, one of the things the court emphasized in its opinion is that this is good for students as well as for teachers because students should be able to handle diverse views, including religious views, when they attend schools, and that to do so is to encourage a tolerant and diverse society. And that's really a message that should extend to everybody in a culture where so often people of faith are attacked unfairly with discriminatory laws and discriminatory speech, especially in the wake of the Dobbs ruling last week. A pluralistic society means that everyone is welcome and everyone is free to, to speak their mind, even when that concerns matters of religion. Uh, that's a value worth sharing. And John, thank you so much for your time today and for your analysis. We really appreciate it.